Hello everybody, I'm Cheryl Talley Moss and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. In this episode, I'm going to share with you an update of the seedlings that I have growing in my grow room. And then I'm going to take you out to the greenhouse and share some of the plants that I'm growing out there. I'm going to share a few of the fruit trees I have. And also I'm gonna share a nice surprise that I found growing near my compost bin. And actually it was some seeds that, well, it was the same seeds that I was trying to germinate, but I couldn't because the seeds were too old and I refused to buy any more seeds this year. So I'm gonna share with you a blessing. I hope you enjoy this video. If you're new to my channel, I'm going to just let you know that I share ways how you can grow without straining your body, how you can grow food 365 days of the year in zone 8A. I'm in Mesquite, Texas, and I grow all year long, and I'm a senior citizen with some health issues, so I try to grow things ergonomically where I don't have to do a lot of bending and stooping. So if you know of somebody that has a desire to grow food and they are a senior citizen or if they have health issues, they may be disabled, I would hope that you would share my channel with them because I'm going to share a lot of tips on how to do this without uh, straining your muscles, your knees, and your back. And I'm also expanding the scope of my channel, and I'm going to be sharing with you uh, tips on how you can water bath can, pressure can, freeze, solar dry, or dehydrate your harvest so that you can enjoy the benefits of your hard labor all during the year. And I'm always doing a lot of experiments, so I'm going to share some experiments that I was doing this year in the greenhouse, which consist of growing peppers by seed, and I'll show you the results. And you can go back and look at some of my previous videos, and you can see the progress that I made with this experiment. And this is the first time that I overwinter a pepper for two winters in a row. So I have a two-year-old pepper plant that I'm going to show you. And well, let's just get started and you'll see everything that I want to share with you today. Okay, if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe because I'm trying to build up my um, YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, so I would love to bring you all along and hope I can learn something from you as well. Okay, like I said before, and in every video I say the same thing, let's get started. Party. This is a red cohardy hibiscus uh, seedling that I grew from a seed or several seeds that I collected when I went home to Indiana to pay my condolences to my mother's last surviving sibling, Aunt Lois. She was an avid gardener, guys, and she had a garden up until she died. She grew vegetables and beautiful flowers. She had a really big house that sit way back in the yard and people would drive by to look at her beautiful flowers. I've been searching my uh, photo library trying to find a uh, picture of the flowers the last time I went to visit her before she passed. And if I can find it, I'm gonna post it in a video. But I want you to know that this is just a wonderful way for me to celebrate my aunt and to keep her memory alive in my heart. And I am just so happy. My sister also collected seeds and I'm hoping that uh, her seeds germinate and she's able to grow a beautiful uh, cold hardy red hibiscus bush. Okay, God bless you all. Okay guys, it's been 17 days since I planted the seed. And I made uh, that video I just showed you uh, last week. And so now I want you to see what my Aunt Lois red hibiscus, cold hardy hibiscus look, biscuits look like today. And this bush in her yard was about nine feet tall. Um, it gets really, really big. And uh, of course, it's a perennial. If it uh, can survive the brutal winters in Chicago. 
uh, Gary, Indiana, which is about 34 miles from Chicago. So, you know, it gets really cold there. So I'm hoping that I will have good luck with it. I may have to shade it a little bit because it may not be um, uh, good to have in uh, triple digit temperatures like we sometimes get in uh, North Texas. So, yeah, this is going to be a wonderful tribute to my aunt. And I can always think of her while I watch uh, this plant grow. Okay. Here uh, you can see from this picture that my Armenian cucumbers were root bound. So I decided to pot up them. And I used a uh, plastic fork and a little twine to have them uh, something to catch hold more because they're beginning to vine. Hopefully, uh, if we don't get a freeze within the next month or so, these will be able to go into the ground or into a garden bed. But uh, they're getting ready to take off, and I didn't anticipate them growing so fast. But I potted them uh, up in a little uh, compost and potty mix. And uh, I'm going to give them just a little diluted uh, liquid fertilizer, which will be my uh, fish emulsion and seaweed. And uh, hopefully uh, I can contain them, uh, maybe switch out the forks for straws as they get a little bit taller. My soursop trees, two of them that I've been growing from seeds since 2017, I believe. It's uh, currently 73 degrees, very sunny, so I'm going to let them stay out here for about an hour or two and get some really good sun. Let me go and check the metal tag that I put on here to make sure of the date. Yep. Sour sop growing from seed since November 2017. Uh, I think I'll let them stay out here an hour. I don't want to take a chance of shocking them. These are my babies. I've got several other trees that I've grown from seed, and I'll share those with you too. If not in this video, in another video. So I know I'm taking a chance drawing insects to them, uh, but I'll just spray them with a little neem oil before I bring them back in the house. Yeah, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> I decided to move the soursop trees to the greenhouse so that they can get the filter sun from the greenhouse cover. And I think they would be okay in here as long as it doesn't get, uh, the humidity doesn't get too high. Uh, it'll be okay. And I have the uh, monitor um, so I know the temperature and the humidity of the greenhouse at all times. Um, even when I'm in the house, so yeah, I'm going to bring them out. I brought them out here. I think that's a good decision and let them get some filter sun. Soursop trees will die if the temperature drops to 40 or below 40 degrees. So I'm going to have to monitor these trees very carefully as far as the temperature is concerned and make sure that it doesn't drop below 41 degrees because they will die. Uh, yeah, but with my new toy, I'm able to lay in bed at night and check the uh, remote thermostat and make sure that that temperature is not too low or the humidity too high. And if it is, I'll come out here and move these trees back into the house. This Kalamondan tree is enjoying the sun. I moved it. And you guys know I brought this out here, unless you're new to my channel, 
I got this from U.S. Citrus when it was only 12 inches long. And look how much it has grown, guys. The lighter color uh, branches are the ones that just came on. And check this out. Now, they're put, putting on, what do you call these, spikes that protect the fruit. So, we may be getting fruit this year or next year. Because they're putting out a lot of spikes. I think that's what you call these. It's really interesting to see. Yeah, so I'm really happy about that. I also put my two Mexican key lines and two improved Maya lemons up on this table so that they can get a lot of sun. Um, I harvested all the fruit a couple of months ago and they are loaded now with baby fruit. These fly in and out of the greenhouse as you can see here. Let me go, let me take it in closer. You just see clusters and clusters of fruit all over these plants. And we're still getting blooms and baby fruit. Oh, I think one just fell. There we go. So I've been nursing these in the greenhouse all winter long and what I mean by nursing is constantly checking the temperature the humidity there's a little greening in color right in here uh, but I did just water them so uh, they should be fine okay uh, put pieces in when I did my harvest on September the 30th and I've been uh, nursing these in the greenhouse all winter long and as soon as they get consistently warm they will go outside when all the tropical plants go out. The ginger is not doing too well. I planted it August 26th. You can see from that label there. It was doing fine. But then you know we had some cold uh, uh, days where I was only able to get the temperature up to about 50. And uh, well, I think it's going to be okay. I think the root system is okay. And if not, oh well, I'll plant some more. And here's the colossal With a pepper plant growing in the greenhouse during the winter and it's doing very well. I wasn't expecting for it to put any fruit on until it got much warmer but as you can see here it's got some beautiful pieces of fruit. A few of them over here, one back there. And this is the one I overwintered. It put on fruit all winter long. I'll insert a little clip of the little red uh, peppers but now it's going dormant and I'm going to prune this pepper plant back to about right here and um, put it in the ground or in a larger pot because as you can see let me show you right here see that root those roots are busting out of that pot this is the first time I successfully kept this plant or a pepper plant over a year seed are doing real good and some ivy I have it in three pots here's another one no blooms at this time but there will be some blooms and another hanging basket here and here's my miho satsuma it's doing well I cut it back about a foot and uh, got some yellowing leaves so I will feed it some fish emulsion and seaweed and it should bounce back. These yellow leaves are the newer leaves. But it's doing really well.
this is where I planted the cassava. That is not what is in that other blue cooler. That's turmeric. I just remembered. Yeah, this is a nice, bright, sunny location, so the cassava should do very well here until we have consistent temperatures in the 80, 75, 80 degrees, and then I'll move it outside. I'm not going to make the same mistake twice and move it out too early. Okay, I remember what's in here, turmeric. I'm going to go right now in the house and make a label or a sticker and put it on here, and this is turmeric. It's not going to come up until temperatures are consistently above 75 degrees. It's in the alley right here. They're still nice and tucked away for the winter. Uh, 75 degrees today. I, I'm thinking I may take them out of dormancy soon. And I see a lot of zinnias down there. <laughs> Whoops. Let me go closer and show you guys something. Look at all these zinnias coming up. And the wind scattered the seeds. And they're a little yellow because it's not enough nutrients yet in those wood chips because the wood chips are breaking down. But you can see in a few years, I'm going to be able to grow anything I want. And all the wood chips that I have around my property, I don't have any grass in the backyard. I pulled these out of the wood chips, but I'm looking at this seed right here. Let me show you. It's like a sunflower seed. So these might be sunflowers. I was just so sure they were zinnias. Doesn't matter. I'm going to take them into the uh, greenhouse and I'm going to pop them all up. And I will let you guys know what they are pretty soon. Looks like a sunflower seed there. Yeah. That's what that is. So we'll see. Okay, I've got them all potted up. They're out in the greenhouse. And since they are already used to the elements outside and we had a uh, temperature 27 degrees a few days ago. I'm just going to leave these out here in the greenhouse with the greenhouse opening zipped, unzipped. Yeah. They should be fine. I'm almost positive these are sunflowers. Which is crazy because I have old seeds. Old sunflower seeds, right? I could only get one to germinate. I went in the growing room and got this one. It was very similar to these. And I said, I'm not buying any seeds this year. And I have some more trying to uh, germinate in the grow room, and they're not coming up either. And I know a lot of people are not going to believe what I'm getting ready to say, but I believe in miracles. And <laughs> I believe I didn't have to buy any seeds, and God provided these for me. So, yeah, I don't have to acclimate these to or harden them off because these were growing in the wood chips. All of you people that think you can't grow things in wood chips, think again. Okay. So, I hope I wasn't too preachy. And if I was, oh well, I'm a believer. <laughs> and it looks like something that digging right here, probably a cat. Was I have to chase them out of my yard. They're climb right over the fence because I don't have any pets. Something is playing with that, and this is a moon glow pear, and it has beautiful fruiting buds on it. And right here is a Asian pear, and look like it's getting ready to bloom. A lot of fruits, fruit buds. I'm gonna go around the food forest and answer this video in a couple days. This kid is doing very well. Uh, it can handle cold temperatures. It got down to 27 degrees. And I uh, sprinkled a few seeds in here and you can see beets are coming up. Here's some more right here. And over in this tray is where I put the teeny weeny transplants. They are doing very well too. So this good sun should make them come on out. 
I'm going to give them some 511 today. Yes. Miss uh, Linda named it 511. It's actually fish emulsion. And I use it on my greens and my root crops. On my flowering plants, I like to add fish emulsion and seaweed. And I'll show you that whenever I do it. I think I've showed you before. But yeah, that 511 works good. <laughs> and I love Back it. inside my home and I just harvested these green tomatoes from the greenhouse. They're still productive, so I feel very blessed. Okay. This concludes my video for today. In my next video, I'll give you an update on the seedlings that are growing inside my home in my grow room. And I'm going to share more of my fruit trees with you. I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to watch my video. If you haven't clicked the thumbs up button and subscribed, I hope you do now. The end. Thank you for watching, everybody. Bye now.